Welcome to Basic Brewing Video. I'm James Spencer. And I'm Steve Wilkes. We are revisiting a topic today. We are. Uh, sour Berliner Weiss. Mm -hmm. I was going to say sour mash Berliner Weiss, but the last time we did this recipe, it was a sour mash. Mm -hmm. This time we're doing it differently. We're doing a sour wort, wort. Berliner Weiss. W-O-R-T. And why is it different? I'll show you in a minute. But first of all, <laughs> when I, we want to shamelessly plug our, our friend uh, Mike Tonsmeyer's <laughs> book, American Sour Beers, Innovative Techniques for Mixed Fermentations. You bet. If you are into sour beers and sour brewing, you need to get this book. He's, yep. not, he's not paying us to do that. Nope. It's just the truth. Nope. So there you go. This brew is inspired by the book. If you'll remember back, a while back, we did a Berliner Weiss where I did a sour mash. Mm -hmm. I, I soured a mash and let it sit for three days and then brewed with the wort out of that. Mm -hmm. Well, the problem with that is that it was difficult in that pot that I used to keep it away from oxygen. And oxygen and outside air brings in other critters than the lactobacillus, which mm -hmm. is the bacteria that you use to sour the wort. Mm -hmm. So you get some funky, sometimes even like dumpstery yeah. <laughs> aromas and stuff uh, that, with that process. So this is a process, the sour worting is a process that is designed to have more control, mm -hmm. less oxygen, and give you a more kind of refined product. So why don't you uh, start <clears throat> us off by pouring our beers and I'll tell you All right. how I brewed them. And I'll use our basic brewing bottle opener. That's right. And I'll read from our basic brewing logbook. <laughs> oh, it is almost Black Friday. <laughs> Christmas time is here. <laughs> so I started off with six quarts of water at 160 degrees Fahrenheit. That's 5.6 liters at 71 C. And to that, I added one and a half pounds of American two row. That's 680 grams. And one pound uh, or 450 grams of malted wheat and four ounces or 113 grams of malted rye. And I rested that at 152 degrees Fahrenheit or 66.6 C for one hour. And by the way, I put that in my oven. The pot was so small that I, I put it in my oven. This is a two gallon batch. At the end of that hour rest, I added uh, a gallon or 3.7 liters of room temperature water uh, to get the wort or the uh, mash down to 120 degrees Fahrenheit or 49 C because that apparently is the sweet spot that lactobacillus likes. Now where do we get the lactobacillus? We get it from grain. It's just naturally occurring on the grain. So uh, I took uh, unmilled American two row, eight ounces or 226 grams, and I mixed it in the mash and I let that rest for half an hour. Then I took out the bag doing brew in a bag brewing, and I collected two gallons of wort. Hmm. Now I poured that into two one gallon jugs and filled it all the way to the top so that there was no air <clears throat> at all. Now to keep that wort at the sweet spot, I put it into my electric smoker. And I set the temperature so that it would maintain that, that temperature uh, of 120 degrees Fahrenheit or 49C for three days. And during that time, the lactobacillus uh, soured the wort. Mm -hmm. So then, uh, after it soured for three days, I poured it into the brew pot and I boiled for 15 minutes. And at the beginning of that 15 minutes, I added seven grams of Holler Tower hops. And uh, 15 minute boil, chilled it. Uh, I poured it into our uh, three gallon hardware store jug and added uh, US05, Safael US05, and uh, it fermented. It went down from 1035 to 1006, so our alcohol by volume is 3.8% alcohol. So it's a nice, right. it's a, and by the way, I, I primed with 36 grams of dextrose, or corn sugar, uh, batch primed, mm -hmm. and uh, got 15 bottles out of this batch. Wow. So, Let's see what we Let's think. Let's see what we think. Ooh, it's nice and tart. That really is nice. Nice and tart, but clean. Very clean. That's it's so clean, you can't think of anything to say about it. It's not, <laughs> it's not funky. <laughs> it's not funky. It's not funky. It's just sour. 
and it's it's great. I he's, really can't think of anything to say. He's stunned. I am. <laughs> well, you know, <clears throat> this is a great beer style that we just can't get. This is one of the beer styles that you, if you want to drink a Berliner Weiss in the middle of America, not in a giant city, you pretty much have to make it. Yeah. And so um, I'm very happy with this. Now, in, in Germany, it's my understanding, in Berlin, if you get a Berliner Weiss, you can't, wow. you, it's hard to get it plain like this. They always add either raspberry or woodruff syrup. Mm -hmm. Well, or they call it syrup, probably. <laughs> I'm Arkansas, so I'll call it syrup. Syrup. So my, I challenged Steve to come up with an Arkansas-based syrup yep. to uh, complement our nice and tart Berliner Weiss. So uh, traditionally you'd have either Woodruff syrup or raspberry syrup. Those are the two that I know that are common. Um, so what I did though, I didn't have raspberries or Woodruff, but I did have blueberries that were grown right here in Washington County in Arkansas. And I had some lavender that was grown in my herb garden. So I made a lavender blueberry syrup. So, so let's go back in time and see how Steve came up with our syrup. When I was much younger, <laughs> All right, so we're going to make some blueberry lavender syrup here, and let me tell you about the ingredients, and then I'm going to show you the process. It's super simple. Here's the star of the show. These are blueberries, fresh from my freezer, and they were fresh from the Arkansas orchards last year. Here's some dried lavender. These are lavender leaves from my herb garden. And here's a cup of sugar. Here's a cup of water. That's it. So here's what we're going to do. I've got my uh, about a cup and a half of blueberries here. I'm going to add a cup of water. Yum, yum. Now I'm going to put on these magic blades. Now how much would you pay? <laughs> but wait, there's more. <laughs> and now we're going to hit this thing for about 10 seconds. All right, next step. I can't do it. <laughs> Who's got a pickle jar? <laughs> All right, so here's our blueberry, our macerated blueberries. And we're going to bring these up to a boil. Watch me do this, I can do it. Yay, okay. So we're gonna take this, put our sugar in here, one cup of sugar. That was my dramatic voice. I'm gonna mix this all up. Man, it smells good, man. We need some pancakes. And last, about two tablespoons, two teaspoons of uh, lavender. Now this is one of those recipes that if you like a lot of a flavor, you can put a lot in. If you want a little more subtle flavor, leave it out. Or leave... But let me warn you about lavender a little bit. You'll smell like James's grandmother's bathroom. <laughs> or this will. Now lavender is pretty strong. It has a strong flavor. It has a, you know, it's really pretty assertive. So, and it can be a little astringent. So, you know, don't get too carried away with it your first time out. Um, you can always put more in the next batch. It's super easy to make. And this way of doing it, way of making the syrup, you could do this with raspberries. You could do it with woodruff. You could do it with ginger. You could do it with Marianne. No, you can't. She's sorry. But, um, you know, it's, it's just so simple to make. So we're going to let this cook down for about 10 minutes, and then I'll show you how to strain it, and we'll go from there. All right, so we've let this simmer now for about 10 minutes and it's ready to strain. So what I've got is some cheesecloth that is uh, just uh, dampened so that it's a little easier to work with. And I'm going to pour it through the cheesecloth through a colander into a bowl. So I want to strain it. If you can, you can do it through the colander by itself, but you'll, you know, you'll get little bits of lavender and who wants that? So we're going to strain this through. My grandma's shawl. <laughs> no, it's Stevie Nicks' shawl. <laughs> 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 
And I'm just going to kind of press it through. Yum. Reminds me of baby days. Yeah, no kidding. Well, ooh. Baby days when they're eating canned beets. Mmm. <laughs> 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 Diaper genie. <laughs> That's right. Talk about your brew in a bag. <laughs> okay, friends. There's our syrup. Now, if you were to completely, you know, there's still little, some little flecks of blueberry seeds, I think. They're so tiny. You could strain that again if you wanted. You know, you could put it back through, like even a coffee filter, and you could make it crystal clear. Eh, who cares at this point? But when this cools down, We'll have a lovely blueberry lavender syrup that we're going to check out with James's high, uh, what do you call that thing? Berliner Weiss. So there you go, super easy. Yeah, 10 minutes and, and we're good to go. This is the batch we just made and this is the batch I made last night so it would be nice and cool. Right, now we're both left-handed and that's a right-handed <laughs> right thing. It's got the spigot on the left-hand side. I think I can handle it. <laughs> Now, the beauty about this is that you get to dose your own, you, you know, you're dosing at serving time. Yeah. So you get to, to modify the amount that you, I'm, I'm interested to see how that's going to look after you, uh, after you put the, the syrup in. How do the Germans do it? <laughs> I don't know. I've read some things. <laughs> oh, they, oh, oh the beer. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, well, I don't know. I don't know whether they put the syrup in first and then put the beer on top. Or... I don't know. And I don't know how much to put in, so I'm going to put that much in. Oh, look how pretty that is. Oh, it's. Look, it's separating out a little bit. <gasps> That's beautiful. How cool is that? The syrup is uh, is That's heavier than the great. beer, so it it went straight for, to the bottom. Yeah. Instead of a black and tan, it's a it's a tan and purple. Yum. Well, this is just quite delightful. Hmm. Now that's tasty. That's pretty. That's pretty darn tasty. <laughs> that that the sour and the sweet. It's a little like ordering Chinese. <laughs> no. Except it's not breaded. It's <laughs> you not know, deep fried. <laughs> now there's still a, there's still a kind of a gradient of it's settled down to the bottom there. How mm -hmm. cool. So I guess I guess if you if you wanted you I guess if you wanted to mix it better you could put the syrup in first. Yeah, I think but I kind of like that. That's the great. Pre the presentation of that is really cool. That's yeah. You can see that. How cool is that? Well, I think this is a perfect uh, drink to revisit in the summertime. Me too. When the fruit uh, will be more abundant. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, you could pick out different, <coughs> different flavors to pair with the Berliner Weiss. Yeah. You know, in fact, when we were making this up, literally... <laughs> I was thinking, wouldn't it be fun to try like ginger and maybe even some chili, mm. you know, a little hot. I mean, you might not actually put it with a Berliner Weiss, but maybe you could pick like a cream ale or you could do right. all kinds of fun stuff. And it's so easy to make. What did it take us, 15 minutes to make the syrup? Yeah. And so, you know, play with your food. There you go. All right. Thank you, James. Thank you, Steve. Cheers. Cheers. Happy brewing. Happy Thanksgiving if you're in America. Come and visit us on the web. At basicbrewing.com, you can find archive lists of both our audio and video podcasts on home brewing. You can also find our DVDs, extract brewing and partial mashing, stepping into all grain, low-tech lagering and decoction mashing, introduction to wine kits, and our Basic Brewing Brewer's Logbook, where you can track and log up to 50 batches of beer. Drop us a line. We'd love to hear from you. Write to James at basicbrewing.com, Steve at basicbrewing.com, or just use the contact form on basicbrewing.com. I wonder what Sally Fields is doing right now. <laughs> <laughs> it's windy out. She's <laughs> standing on a table somewhere. <laughs> She'll be flying around somewhere. <laughs> we'll have none of that. <laughs> okay. Don't make a habit out of it. Okay, I won't. <laughs> Alright, let's go. <laughs> Welcome to Ancient Reference Theater. <laughs> That's right.